for our campaign. Let me just say that it's not new. We've been using this concept since last summer. In July, at the summit, the member states agreed to uh, the wording even before when the Commission had drafted it and presented it to them. So the reference is definitely uh, out there. People are starting to use it, understand it. There is much work to be done, of course, to spread the word. But as the investments pick up, as the funds go where they are meant to, I think the uh, fame the, of the concept will pick up as well. For the rest, of course, I think, as, as you've mentioned, it's important to say that these investments under the Next Generation EU plan serve to prepare for the future, the future of the next generations of the EU. And it's the future of these generations which is very important to us. And you, you're quite right. We need to ensure that it's not about investments which increase the debt that next generations will have to pay up, but that it is a smart investment and that all our investments are investments into infrastructure for the future, future-proof projects, the green transition, the digital transition, the environmental transition. The idea being, of course, to improve the climate situation, but also to improve the competitiveness of our economy, future employment jobs for the young people. And that's why the president always uses the term building forward better. A lot of people talk about building back better. So to uh, improve uh, past infrastructure, what we want to do is we want to build forward. In other words, invest in new types of infrastructure, new projects, uh, infrastructure to serve the interests of the future generations. Of course, any uh, money that you borrow on a financial market will have to be repaid at some point. That's just how it works. But what we're trying to do is to ensure that these uh, loans are refunded, repaid by the additional economic activity that will be generated by these invest investments. It really is an important issue. It's something we're talking about a lot. We're looking at the uh, plans submitted by the member states and we are looking specifically at the investments to ensure that they do meet the criteria that I've just set out. I'm terribly sorry. I don't know what you mean by separating um, Albania and North Macedonia. Uh, there was a comment by the commissioner. I'd like to give the floor to Anna on that point. Indeed, I can confirm that the uh, president uh, met with uh, the prime minister of North Macedonia this morning. They uh, covered a series of subjects. Uh, obviously, the uh, uh, the president uh, reiterated her support to um, reopening uh, uh, negotiations with North Macedonia. She's very pleased with the reforms uh, in North Macedonia within the context of uh, the um, accession procedure, and she encouraged uh, the authorities to continue along those lines. She also talked to the Prime Minister about uh, the support given hitherto by the European Union to North Macedonia in their efforts against uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, including the distribution of vaccines by the European Union and its member states. And then finally, they talked about uh, the projects that could be financed uh, with uh, the economic and investment package for the Balkans, uh, uh, for North Macedonia, uh, with regard to uh, rail infrastructure, corridors for gas, uh, and investments uh, with regard to, to solar and wind energy. So that was the meeting. On specific questions, I'd like to give the floor to Anna. I think you're aware of uh, the Commission's uh, position. For some time now, we have uh, been uh, saying that we feel that Albania and uh, North Macedonia have met the conditions to move forward, and we would like to have intergovernment uh, 
conferences with both the co countries as quickly as possible. And that is the very clear position. Perhaps uh, just to say that the Enlargement uh, Commissioner, Mr. Vaheli, uh, met with uh, um, Prime Minister of Sahev. Uh, uh, according to the tweet, they had a good um, discussion on uh, a council approval of uh, a net, uh, negotiation framework as soon as possible. Uh, as you know, the dis this uh, framework is necessary to have the intergovernmental uh, conference. So I think the position is very clear there. I think that the commissioner made it patently clear last week and previously that the European Commission position is that both countries have been have been doing what they have been asked to do in order to move move forward. And the Enlargement Commissioner's position and the Commission's position is that we would like to see both countries um, engage in an intergovernmental conference as quickly as possible. You know very well that uh, the responsibility to call the um, IGC falls with the uh, presidency of the Council. And in order to do that, uh, the member states need to agree on the network, uh, the negotiating framework. So that's where we stand right now. So according to the commissioner, um, uh, and what you're referring to here, is that if there is no agreement with uh, North Macedonia and Bulgaria, there perhaps, well, it will be up to the commission, uh, the council to decide. Uh, we are saying that Albania has already um, fulfilled the conditions, but it's up to council to discuss that, not up to us. And so I think we've been quite clear on that. And I hope that that uh, responds to the question. And another th thing to add is that, of course, we encourage uh, North Mar Macedonia and Bulgaria to resolve uh, these issues in order to launch the negotiations. So that covers that subject. And so now we can continue.